back in 2015, I applied for 100 jobs and only five of them got back to me. The following year, with no additional experience up my sleeve, I applied for pretty much the very same roles, received 20 first round interviews and three final offers. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a step-by-step -step guide on how to write a resume for the tech industry that'll guarantee you a first round interview. We're going to be covering key sections that should be in your resume, some non-negotiable tips and mistakes to avoid, and lastly, building out a resume together with the help of our sponsor, Beam Jobs. Hey everyone, my name is Vivian and welcome back to my channel where I share my experiences working in tech as a data scientist here in Sydney, Australia. In today's highly competitive landscape, a well-written resume is essential for standing out from the crowd and getting your foot through the door. But before we start writing, I want you to have a think about the purpose of a resume and who the target audience really is. Your resume is basically your dating profile, but instead of a potential partner on the other side, it is a hiring manager, a recruiter, or maybe a bot that goes through a thousand applications every single day. Apparently, the average hiring manager spends less than 10 seconds reading each resume, meaning that you literally only have 10 seconds to make that first impression count, enough to hook them on, want to read more about you, and possibly get you through the door for that first round interview. And this is why the structure and readability of your resume is so, so important. Which brings me to my very first point. Your resume should be one page and one page only, and consist of five key sections. For today's demonstration purposes, we're going to be using an auto-generated resume by our sponsor, Beam Jobs, with the prompt senior data scientist. A bit more on them later. Your very first section should be your personal info and summary. Keep this clean and simple. Include your full name, an email address, your contact number, your city, and a link to your LinkedIn profile. If you have a GitHub, link it here as well. So one thing that I've implemented recently is a paragraph on my career summary to date. Now, this is pretty much my elevator pitch in a few sentences. I feel like it helps give my resume structure and clarity and helps a recruiter know exactly who I am, what I do and how much experience I have. Now, the next section is by far the most important and should take up around 40 to 50% of your resume. And that is your work experience. And remember, this is not a repeat of your job description. Do not copy your JD into your resume and expect it to be fine. And make sure you only include relevant roles to the position that you are applying for. And side note, if you have no prior corporate experience, include your part-time jobs or any projects that you've done at university. Note that every single dot point should start with an action verb such as implemented, migrated, spearheaded, you get the point. Try to not repeat the same one twice and avoid using weaker ones like helped or worked on. Next, the problem. What exactly did you solve and using what tools? And lastly, include a result to quantify your impact. Now, this is very often left out on resumes that I have seen. So try and quantify your experiences using percentages and dollar signs where possible. I hate to say this, but large numbers psychologically make your work seem more impactful and impressive. I will also put some examples up on the screen of how you can quantify your non-corporate work experience. And honestly, I feel like recruiters care more about the effort that you put into trying to quantify your impact rather than the numbers themselves. Moving on to the third section, now this is skills. This is a very, very important section for you to showcase all of your skills in one place and also bypass a lot of the automatic resume scanning software for certain buzzwords and keywords. So you wanna include your programming languages, your tech stack, and any tools that you might be using on a daily basis. So usually the skills that any job is looking for is already going to be listed in the job description. So a tip that I have is to go through similar job descriptions, copy and paste a bunch of them into a word cloud or even ChatGPT, and identify the skills, keywords, and buzzwords that just keep appearing, and try to slot them into your resume where appropriate. Moving on to our fourth section, our education. This is short and sweet, just a couple of lines is enough. Include your university, your degree, your graduation date or expected graduation date. You can also include your top achievements if you want, like finish in the top 10% of my cohort with a 90 wham. But honestly, this gets less and less important as you have more and more experience. And any additional certifications that you have achieved throughout your career will also go here as an example, a Python course or any AWS certification. And the fifth section, projects. Now this is actually optional. I personally don't have any section on projects on my own resume, just because most of my interesting achievements have come from previous roles, but you can include any relevant experiences from your coding projects or any side gigs. And if you are a recent university graduate, your academic coursework or any interesting research projects can also go under here. But remember to follow the same action, problem and result format that we talked about earlier on. And here's a final tip from me before we go into creating our own resume. Small details are so, so important. Please don't overlook this. 
First impressions really do matter, especially if you're going for a data or tech role where attention to detail is kind of expected. Take a look at these two screenshots up on the screen and let me know what you think. Make sure you are consistent with your use of full stops. You either have them on every bullet point or you don't. Make sure your hyphens are consistent, your font sizes are consistent, and definitely have no grammatical errors. And yes, whilst perfect formatting isn't going to guarantee you getting the job, these small grammatical or punctuation errors can be such a turnoff or red flag and could be the reason why you don't hear back. Now that we've gone through the five key sections of any resume and some final tips, let's now go ahead and build a resume together with the help of our sponsor, Beam Jobs. If you haven't heard of them before, they are the best online resume builder, having generated over 2 million resumes, with users landing jobs at large tech companies including Meta and Google. They have so many different templates with over 2,000 examples specific to your career, your niche, and your experience level. You also have the option of uploading an existing resume, pulling in from your LinkedIn profile, customizing an existing template, or just starting blank. But my favorite feature, they use AI to give every resume a score out of 100 and offer continuous improvements and suggestions to make sure that you have your best possible resume. Let's get into building one out together. Alrighty, so we're now within Beam Jobs. So if I click build my resume, it's gonna take me to this place where I can choose a template that I wanna use. Let's go with something a little bit different. Let's go with this one. So if I click into this template and go use template, I then have the option of choosing an industry example, uploading an existing resume, importing a LinkedIn profile if that's already readily available, or you can just start blank. For today's demonstration, I'm actually going to be fixing up my friend's resume. I have it in a PDF format, so let's just go upload existing resume and I'm going to drag it in. And it suddenly turned it into this format already. So this is my friend's resume. It is a Google Doc that I have that I saved as a PDF. You can see it's definitely lacking a bit of visualization. It's not very readable. The formatting could do with a bit of work and Beam Jobs has automatically turned this resume into this. Upon first glance, I noticed that this dot point has actually been cut off when it got rendered across. So let me just pop the whole thing in and make sure that we're not losing any part of our initial resume. Robert doesn't have any projects on his resume, so let me just delete this. I don't like how it's just going over onto the second page, so let's just fix the spacing very quickly. Okay, now we have everything on one page. So my favorite part about Beam Jobs is that it gives you a resume score and it gives you constant improvements and suggestions. Let's recalculate the score because we added a line in. It's giving me 85 and it's saying that I failed six checkpoints. Let me just start at the top. It's saying how only 10% of our work experience bullets have been quantified, which is definitely not ideal because as I mentioned earlier, every single dot point should be in the format action, problem, and result. So if I scroll down and told me all the ones which are missing key metrics. So as an example, before worked with product and marketing to implement A-B testing on landing page. The after implemented A-B testing on landing page to increase likelihood of customer conversion by 14% generating 90,000 in new monthly revenue. You can see how these two points say the same thing, but doesn't this one just look so much more powerful? So now let's go ahead and look at Robert's resume. Let's just pick a few to go through. The first one, built and implemented advanced predictive models resulting in an increase in customer retention and significant boost in user engagement. This is actually not a bad sentence, but it is definitely missing some quantifiable figures. So let's say resulting in a 10% increase in customer retention and rather than significant let's go with and 15% boost in user engagement year on year. Now this sentence is looking a lot better. The next one collaborated with product and engineering teams to integrate AI and machine learning features enhancing product value and user experience by how much enhancing product value by 100k as an example. Let's go on to the next one let's say this one developed machine learning models to identify and prevent fraudulent transactions, reducing fraud cases successfully. What is successfully? Reducing fraud cases by 13% month on month and saving, always give a dollar impact to make your work feel like it's actually helping the business and saving 300, 200K in, in revenue. There you go. 
So you can see how adding these little things have already helped make my resume a lot more impactful. So now it's saying that we fixed three of them, but we still have seven left to go. Let's do one more because I think you get the point anyway. Worked on reporting analytical processes, improving team productivity and data accuracy by 25%. Even a very simple percentage sign should now make our overall score go up. There we have it. It's back at 40 now. So if we recalculate, our resume score is now at 89, which is getting better. Moving on, it's saying that some of our bullet points don't start with strong action words. So let's take a look at this. For lead, let's go with implemented. And let's recalculate again. And it's at 100. Perfect. It's also saying that the resume is too short and should contain a few more words. But I'm not too fussed because it actually looks like a pretty decent length. And... It's only like 19 words below the limit, so that should be fine. You should add more bullet points, so maybe Robert can go back and just add in like one more dot point for each of these to keep everything at four dot points and very consistent. But for now, let's just leave it and anything else. Now, this is the one that I was talking about earlier with inconsistent full stops, hyphens, grammatical errors. So apparently one of them has a full stop at the end and that is this one let's just delete the full stop and now this section is 100 and if we go back to our resume score we are now at 92 which is a lot better than the 84 that we started at if you want to move say skills above education just click on skills rearrange and you can easily just drag it above and here we go skills is now above education if you don't like the accent color the font very very easy to change font size, everything, spacing. And if you decide that you want to switch back to a more professional looking template, we just go to template and then go back to the very standard. And here we have it. Super seamless to transition between different formats, change sections. But yeah, this is Beam Jobs. I love the AI part of it. I love how it tells you what are the things you should be changing on your existing resume. And it really makes changing your resume so much easier. And once you're happy with your resume, all you gotta do is download and you're done. Anyway, that is all that I have for today's video. After all, your resume is really your ticket to a new role, so it's really important to spend time and resources into making it the best it possibly can be. If you're interested, I will leave a link down to Beam Jobs in my description box below. And as always, I will see you in my next one. Bye!